I'll rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lori, we'll call for attendance, please. Sandy, here. Matt, here. Kelly, here. Ken, here. Lori, here. Uh, with regards to the agenda, I'd like to add on um, a report from the Planning Commission and a report from the Historical Society. Are those action items or are they just going to be? Just report. Just reports? So that would be um, before or after engineer's report? Before. Okay. 21 would be Planning Commission and 22 would be Historical Society. And under um, unfinished business, uh, the DPW delude contracts. Let's see. Get that one. Uh, Sandy, did you have anything for the agenda? Nope. Matt? Could we possibly consider amending new business? Strike 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 20. And the reason, uh, with all due respect, to do so, last month we instituted a policy committee to review policies. Um, and, and we have these here, and I thought maybe just to follow along with the developmental policy committee is to review these and promptly get them back for the next meeting. Sir. Uh, secondly, uh, maybe section number three, um, the credit card use. I, I, I don't know technically um, our, our legal advice is in the back, but under the supervisor's credit card use, if, if that is an issue that is being, um, and, and I don't know if it is a legal issue, is this the form to discuss that publicly? No, it's not. It's not then fine, but um, just consideration to strike, uh, as I said, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 20 then. And three? Well, three, but I, I don't know if this is the form for that. Yeah, consider to strike all of those. I'm sorry, 10, 11, 12? No, 11. So yeah. the, um, the policy ones, which would be 10, no, 11, 11, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15. The 14 is the rules of governance, though, for the board. Fourteen's motion to amend public participation in the board meeting policy. Thirteen's motion to amend Cotsville Township Board of Trustees rules of voting. I didn't. That's 13. Okay. Wow, this is the one I was given. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, everybody picked up, picked up your um, packet. Keep the Yours had number so, seven as being so. So, so this is an amended agenda that I'm looking at now. Well, it was a corrected agenda. Number seven on your original one says engineer's report, which we had switched down to the comment section last month. So we just corrected that. You had picked yours up before I could stick it in there.
All right. Anybody else have anything with regards to Matt's request? Well, I guess we all got to get the same numbers. Do you have the same numbers now? I don't think so. You have the same numbers I have? Yes, I have the same ones you had. So which one do we want to go by? Looks like we need a new policy. So you're looking at 10, 11, 13, and 19, because you stated that the others, motion to amend Cotsville Township Board of Trustees rules for voting and the principle of governance, correct? Right, well the agenda policy <clears throat> is board members. The rule of engagement. She is a different one also. Is board members. <laughs> Who's on first? The three of us had the same agenda. Do you have extras, Lord? Well, if three of us have one kind, why don't you just get the one like ours? Well, the audience has the same kind as... What had happened is Kelly was helping me out with the agenda. She had inadvertently put the engineer's report as number seven on the original agenda that went out to the board members. When I noticed that, I changed it, put the engineer's report down to letter I, and renumerated the agenda items. So the three board members had received the first agenda. I corrected the agenda, <clears throat> which you now have, which is what is in dispute up here. Excuse me. <laughs> All right, so Matt's asking for 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, which are all policies, to be taken off the agenda for the policy review um, volunteers to look at. That's correct. Thank you. Okay. No, my my thoughts on that is these are board um, policies. So I feel the need to keep them on. So if you want to, can. <clears throat> I'm still trying to decide for these two. I made an amendment to the uh, a motion to amend this. I need a second to carry on. Oh, well, you made the motion. I'll second it. But can we go how many all the numbers again? Are we starting with three? Because we had six the first time. Uh, we, we could. I mean, You were talking about policies. Well, originally I said 3, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 20. Then we got new agendas. Three is the same. 10, 11, 12. And then why are you taking off the credit card use? That's not um, well, it's during the legal. It's not a legal issue. It's not a legal issue. 
that's been resolved. That's why we put it on there so the people of the township could know what the findings were. It's not a discussion of the policy itself. It's a discussion of uh, something that was brought up with regard to the supervisor using the credit card. I think anybody that's got a question can come in and talk to the supervisor. Is, it, is that is, part of the meeting? Is that the form? Is this the form to, to have that discussion? Is was the question? Uh, this was twofold. As I started, I asked to pull those one, two, three, four, five, six items off because I thought we would use our policy committee that was generated last month because we were said to have no policies. And then I asked if three could be considered taken up because I didn't think this was the form to discuss that issue um, at this meeting. It's, it's just asking. I mean, obviously, I'm, it's just my opinion. I think if we go one by one instead of trying to lump them all together, so. Okay, however you think it's best to address it. Okay, so Matt would like to make a motion. You want me to go right down the line from number one? Mm -hmm. To the remove number three, because I don't, I don't know if this is the form, the correct form to discuss that issue. You just want to make a motion to remove, remove it. number three. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor to remove number three? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. We have two and two. I would like to uh, a roll call vote on that since I have only two A's and two nays and we have five board members so I need to know where everyone stands. Sandy? Yes. Matt? Yes to remove it. Kelly? No. Ken? Yes. Lori? No. Motion carries. You want to do each and every one of these separately? Well, I, because that didn't really pertain to a policy, and Matt was asking for policies to be removed. For the rest of them, do you want them all separately, or can they all be No, one? they can be put together, I guess, unless someone else has an, an objection to that. So 10 through 14 and, and 19. on the new agenda. And I'll second that again. Okay. What were the numbers again, please? 10 through 14 and 19. Correct. 19 is not policy. All right, 10 through 14, that's true. 10 through 14, I know it's not. 10 through 14, it's fine. Ken, is that fine? Yeah. Okay, Matt made a motion to remove uh, policies 10 through 14. Ken seconded, all in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose? Aye. Motion carries. Anything else with the agenda? <clears throat> Anything, Ken? No. Glory? No. Okay. So can you restate the motion so that we have it all. Um, we don't have a motion yet to approve. If you'd like a motion to approve the agenda as amended. As amended. 
I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. A second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Excuse me, motion carries. Motion to approve consent agenda. I can find my little note. Um, I noticed on the consent agenda under the clerk to attend MAMC conference that there was no um, no numbers. So I'd like to add those right now. The um, hotel it would be three hundred twenty eight dollars for a two night stay. And the conference itself is three hundred dollars, so it'd be six hundred and twenty-eight dollars plus mileage and meals. And I realize it's in uh, Mackinac Island, so I am willing to pay for half of the mileage, and the township, if the township could play, pay for the other half. <laughs> that we postpone the consent agenda to the next meeting because some of this we just got haven't even had a chance to go through and read all of the minutes or the correspondence. If I could get clarification on, are you asking just for the minutes or are you asking for all of the bills too? Everything on the consent agenda. The whole consent agenda. <clears throat> just, just to this question, I asked our, our treasurer, and she was so kind <clears throat> to personally get back to me. Under the approval of the treasurer's report, this is a common treasurer's report. It has been what we've been receiving. Um, I know we we're talking about having a little bit more. Um, what would you like to see? Well, I, I'm that's, asking. That's well, all. What, that's what they've always done since I've been here. So I just continue. And, and, that, and that's just why, since you know, there was nobody's discussion. ever said anything. So yeah, I'd like your you know, input if you'd like. I mean, we had asked in November um, for updates. When we do consent agendas, we pay bills, we do everything. Um, we had asked about line items, and where are we in regards to line items when we when we say pay those bills? So the clerk pays them. But when I don't know what the line item is, where we're at with the line items, I'm approving something that we, we might not have the money or the funds in it. I, I need to see reports, and then the that's treasurer, why. The treasurer does the bank statements. The clerk is in charge of the general ledger. So I, that would be um, probably more Lori's department for a line item. And that's all I ask. Is it under a treasurer's report, does all that come under the treasurer's report? I mean, you could give me a stack of bills this high, a stack of agendas this high, and we can say yes, and tomorrow we find out we didn't have the money to pay the bill. I'm just questioning is, is my responsibility, my responsibility as a trustee here to look at items, is this, is this acceptable and normal? Obviously, I'm going to do it this, as a report. If it is, that's fine. That's all I'm asking. I, I don't know. The question's never come up, so. Okay, well. And this okay. is just a look, question. In all the times that I'll I look into it, maybe I'll, I'll get a, uh, another okay. treasurer and see what they, what they, what thank they you. do. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. As I That's said, not a problem. okay, thank you. <clears throat> so you're going to get 
together with Sandy and okay, figure we'll out go. what we can do. I'll do some calls. I'll make some calls. Okay. 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 Alrighty then. So, Ken made a motion to postpone the consent agenda. Matt seconded it. Any more discussion? Um, if we're going to postpone, I would like to have a special meeting then because mm -hmm. otherwise we are going to have a problem with not paying the bills. I don't have a list of them anyways. You do. They're in your, in your uh, box every month. They have been uh, copied the day of the meeting because we received bills up until the, the meeting. And I, I just got these this morning. Did they come in after I was here? The bills that we received, yes. No, 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 the report that I'm looking for. The accounts payable. I've got payroll. This is what... You want to approve what is paid, not what's not paid. Right, it's in your... This is what's been paid. That payroll, is that not? Right. It was the first one that you showed me. The one that's uh, going this way, I think. That's what's been paid. I don't think I have that one. You just showed it this to one? me before I showed you. Yes, that one. I don't have one of those. You just showed it to me, Ken, before you, you showed me the payroll one. I said, no, not that one. No, I had this one. The no, that, that's the one that Kelly just gave you. Yes, I realize that. I still make the motion. I haven't seen it. I haven't looked at it. Okay. Any more discussion? Okay. Lori wants a special meeting. Okay, well, let's. Can we vote on we the first motion. One? Yep, we got a motion to postpone the consent agenda from Ken. Matt seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now, Lori, do you want to make a motion for a special meeting? Uh, I would like to hold a special meeting so we can approve the bills to be paid. Um, I'll second that. Any discussion? Uh, I'd like to pick a date. I think I ask for my motion to be that we postpone this till our next meeting, of which we voted on. Is that correct? Is she going to be able to do that with bills? I, <laughs> That's what I'm I don't know. Her. That's what I'm asking. You. Well, unless you want fines and fees incurred, utility shut off. Well, then what's the date that you can um, do it if you can't do it um, at the next meeting? What? How long do you need to look at it? It won't take long to look at it when I get it. When would you like to have a special meeting? How about, does Monday work? Monday works. Does Monday work? Does Monday work for you, Sandy? Sure. Monday, 10 o'clock? Can we, can we do it first thing in the morning? Nine o'clock. <laughs> that's that's first thing. Okay, so a special meeting. Lori, what's your motion? A uh, special meeting on Monday, April, what is it? Monday, next Monday, 13th. Oh. It'd have to be early. Eight okay. Monday, April 13th at 9 o'clock in the morning.
to up to the consent agenda and pay bills. Correct. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Unfinished business uh, with regards to DPW and Duluth contracts. You need to do open session? Oh, yeah. Open session. Anyone wishing to address agenda items only? <clears throat> okay. Unfinished business. Oh. <clears throat> cough medicine? No. Uh, no. Paying the bills late. I have copies of bills that were paid and that penalties and a finance charge are added. $29 late fee and $29.45 penalty for finance comes to $60, bucks, 59 45 I have several copies of those at home that were given to me that came under the Freedom of Information. So there are late payments. But you still can take and do your payments. All you got to do is do a journal entry after it's opposed and put it where it belongs. There should be no late fees. Any bill that comes in can be paid. If it's put into the wrong account of that, you do a journal entry and put it where it belongs. And all vouchers and invoices should be brought to the board for you people to see. I always brought them. And if you're not doing that, you're, you're paying bills that these people haven't seen. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Are you doing your time thing? Um, I, that I might have a copy of this at home, but it's the policy that we made when I was on the board that all bills, normal everyday bills, can be paid before the next board meeting without board approval. She would bring the copies at the next meeting and show the board. It, there's, there, you don't have to have late payments. We're not going to have our lights shut off. She's supposed to pay the bills when they come in. This is a bunch of baloney. Okay. Um, a while back, I gave you agenda, some agenda items that need to be in, uh, on. The planning commissioner's term renewals will end the end of this month. So after this month, the Planning Commission um, has one, two, three, four, five members and one retroactive that needs to be renewed. And I, I uh, did the research on this. I addressed the board. I sent it to Kelly and Lori. Plus, last week, I sent it before the agenda, uh, uh, before Thursday, so we get on the agenda. It is not on the agenda. We put it on 21 when you came in. No, 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 no. You put on the, um, uh, I'll tell you what you put on. 21 report from the Planning Commission that's a report that's not a motion to renew the terms of the Planning Commissioners that's not the same thing I have a report you asked me to do an update of what the Planning Commission has done from January to present and the same with the historical side that is not renewing the board uh, the Planning Commission term renewals that is not the same thing. Okay, when I sent you the email regarding that, you said it was on what you sent me, and I looked at that, so that's probably where the confusion lied. No, no, lied. no. We emailed. No, I, no, that was something So you different. need the terms put on. Okay, it. when I came in and talked to you, I, I told you about this mm -hmm. yesterday morning, about the Planning Commission term renewals. I gave you the information. Um, I also mentioned about the historical, that's the other thing that didn't get historic site, uh, historical society reimbursement for $79 for the 2014 to 15 fiscal year, retroactively approved and reimbursed. It never got on the agenda in February when I asked, March, and now we're in April. I've asked to, that to let the board make the decision on whether we should be reimbursed. So that's what I talked to you about then. And then when I noticed that on the agenda, the Cotterville Historical Society and the Planning Commission updates were not on the agenda because I had gotten an agenda. I'd already spoken to you about these other things earlier in the day. And I text you concerning that. And you said you didn't have that information. I said it was on the same sheet, the first paragraph of the information about the Planning Commission, uh, the recorder was on there, the Planning Commission term renewals. 
and and then you said you would do it in um, supervisor report and right. I said no it can't be done in supervisor <clears throat> report because we spent a lot of time and energy in that and the last time I saw the supervisor report with um, my annual uh, Planning Commission annual report it was very limited you got a report anything new what do you say Ken anything new oh that's about it and that's what was the report and I spent many many hours on that report and nothing ever got read so that's why I said you asked us to do this you asked us to do, deliver the report and that's what we're going to do and you did add it on the agenda today right. but that is not the same thing I still need to finish this. I, that is not the same thing as adding planning commissioner term renewals. Okay. That needs to be on there. And the historical site reimbursement. And I have that stuff right here for each one of you to see. I had given it to Lori a couple months ago and asked, and she told me that it was approved so it couldn't be on the agenda. But I noticed I that. never said any yes, such she she, she thing said to you. To me, yes, she did. I told you that the person you needed to take it to was the supervisor. She no, is the one who no. makes the recommendations. No, no. About the reimbursement for the historical society, I beg to differ. I, I gave it to Helen and said, sit it on your chair. I did. I got the agenda in February and asked you how come it's not in there. And you said, because it was not, I'm no, sorry, I'm not I done. I thought you were giving me the term. No, term no, I'm talking society. about. And board approved, yes. So, okay, that's it. So those are the two items that are missing that should be on. So with regards to your terms, this is what I had. So then when you said report, I thought you wanted the report. I gave you these. something that looked right. like this. Yep, this is what I got. No. And then I got this. this. Yeah. Yep. This is what has to be done today or we're at the end of the month. Okay. And then we have no commissioners that are new. We already have one that needs to be referenced. And then I mentioned this on our on our uh, text deal. And then the other thing is the historical society. That's what I just gave. You. Which one there? <clears throat> so I'd appreciate if those two items were added to the agenda, please. We're going to have to add that into our special meeting on um, Monday. I'm not going to add it to agenda today. No, no. I want to know why they can't be added today. We already approved the agenda. Well, can't they? John, can they backtrack on the agenda? Yeah. We're going to add them on Monday. We're going to add them on from Monday. Okay, moving along to unfinished business with regards to the DPW dilute contracts. Um, Don and I are still uh, going over them. We're trying to get a date that coincides with the two of us. Uh, we keep having a meeting and something happens to where one or the other has to, something else to do. But, so we're, we are still working on those, just so everybody is aware of that. And um, <clears throat> also with, I'm working on something uh, like a worksheet or order form so that they have consistent order form for that. Um, okay, new business. Item number one, discussion regarding treasure residents. Uh, our township attorney has advised us to put this on um, the agenda because of several new issues that we've received pertaining to it. John, would you like to explain, please? Sure. <clears throat> um, on the issue of the township uh, treasurer's residency, um, we have, the clerk had uh, requested a, an opinion or a review by the Bureau of Elections, State of Michigan. The Bureau of Elections is a, 
is a branch of the Secretary of State, and they advise um, and assist uh, local governments with respect to uh, issues involving uh, voter registration and voting. Um, the, the, the issue uh, was Sandy's residency in the state of Michigan that the voter registration or voter registration had changed uh, from Cotterville Township to the city of St. Clair. The, um, this uh, issue came up uh, in um, October. I provided a correspondence dated October 17th, 2014 to the board, um, advising them of the, um, the issue, the particulars of the, um, the law as I uh, deemed it on residency, and, uh, and the issue uh, needed, in my opinion, was, and also I understand that I don't have it um, myself speaking to the MTA, but I've been advised by Sandy that in her conversations with the MTA, they advised her that it was a decision for the board to make with respect to the eligibility of any officer, official within the township, whether or not the residency uh, creates a vacancy or not. That's my opinion, and I, so I concur with that, that the board determines its own governance. Um, at that time, it was brought up uh, in November, uh, but no, in my opinion, no action was taken. It was discussed briefly, no action taken. Um, the question was asked of Sandy whether it was her intention to reside in Cotterville, and her answer was affirmative. Um, in December, uh, the information uh, with respect to the change of registration uh, was put to the Election Bureau, but they did not respond until uh, recently when they responded uh, in communications on April 2nd. Um, with respect to, in their opinion, once a person's voter registration has changed, uh, then that, in fact, uh, under their interpretation of the um, uh, election laws, uh, makes a person's residence wherever they're uh, registered to vote, and therefore would uh, create, it's self-executing uh, creation of a vacancy in the position of the township. Um, the person who voice that opinion was a um, director of the liaison bureau of the uh, Bureau of Elections. Um, I attempted to contact her on that date, April 2nd, to discuss that with her, um, but she was out of town until April 7th. So I sent on April 3rd, uh, I sent a communication to the, uh, to the board on April 2nd, advising them that because of this um, opinion, not a decision you know, or a rule of law, but this opinion of the Election Bureau, that the board ought to consider this again uh, in light of this development. On April 3rd, um, the director of the Election Bureau, Christopher Thomas, he's actually the director, called me uh, my letter that I had sent uh, to the liaison director, she had forwarded that to his attention. He had reviewed it, and he called me. At that point, I discussed this with him again. Uh, he agreed uh, with me that um, the um, election bureau uh, does not have, um, or the Bureau of Elections does not have the authority to make a determination in terms of the, you know, in directing or uh, uh, a township that this in fact has occurred, a vacancy has occurred. It's their opinion, it's based on their interpretation of the election law, and that um, he understood and didn't disagree with the township board has to make that ultimate determination. Um, he also agreed that, um, that there is, uh, there is no case law on this subject matter. He's been, the, he's been with the department since 1977. He's been the director, I believe, since the, sometime in the 1980s. He agreed there's no case decision on this subject matter. He also agreed that uh, he, is, he is not, in his knowledge, aware of this circumstance arising before that they, that they have particularly dealt with. And he did indicate that it was not their position that they were um, 
meaning to usurp uh, the authority of a board to make its own determination. Now, uh, but he does feel that once the voter registration is changed, then that a person is no longer qualified to vote within their own juris within that jurisdiction, and therefore uh, that is a self-executing uh, action. Now, I should point out that if you go to, and he agreed with this. In fact, he and he he made a point of uh, of making this clear to me that when a person under the motor vehicle code, if you if you move uh, af within after 30 days, you have to uh, notify the Secretary of State of your new address. When that occurs, the Secretary of State takes that information and immediately changes your voter registration. That's, a, that's an automatic dis, uh, determination by the uh, Secretary of State. Um, I myself see that can be problematic because there are reasons why people, uh, quote, move, but I don't know that that determines their jurisdiction in terms of their residency. And there's much case law on that, which as I pointed out to the board in the past, and I think it still remains the same. But the fact that the uh, director of the Bureau and the Bureau of Elections uh, views this subject matter, um, I think that's a, a consequence. Um, in addition, I mean, it is, it is what uh, ultimately, the question of residency is a question of uh, what a court may determine. If someone feels aggrieved by an action of this board, uh, they could take an action. They could take an action in, in the circuit court, or if the any official uh, who is advised that they have vacated the position because of residency, uh, and by a board, they could take uh, what they would deem to be an action uh, to whether or not the board's decision was correct. You're really acting in the sense of a determination based upon facts and/or evidence as to where a person's residence is. And I, I think that that's of uh, the fact that the Bureau of Elections has, has uh, weighed in on the subject matter. Uh, I think the board has to consider it. I'm not saying the board has to make a decision today, and I'm not saying what the board's decision should be. But I do think that ultimately when you, uh, if and when the board makes a decision, there has to be reasons expounded either way, because ultimately if the township has to defend uh, their decision, there should be facts and evidence that they have determined. But John, all of this was opinions. There is no guidelines other than their interpretation, your interpretation. There's no set rules that we're in violation of. We're, if we were aware of it, of which we talked about in November, is that not true? Yeah, I, I provided a letter on October 17th. Um, setting forth what I understood to be the circumstances as they existed at that time. Um, and I indicated that I thought the board should address the issue. And we did. Is that correct? Well, you addressed it, but when I say address it, I mean act, you know, voice, you know, some action taken with respect to it because ultimately, um, you know, the, it's, it's, a, it's an issue. I mean, I, it's an issue that, in my opinion, now again, I'm not directing, I have no authority or, or you know, to just like the Bureau of Directions to tell you, you know, this but is it's what an you opinion. should or should do. It is an opinion. It's not a rule. It's not a guideline. It's not a law. Well, I will say this, that something of this nature could result in that. No doubt. But we may have other like issues that we have to confront here in the near future anyway. So would it be wrong to postpone this also for another 30 days so everyone involved can research it? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that the, the issue has, is, is uh, um, if, if there was a red letter you know, rule of law, like you said, that I could point to and say this, this is the determining uh, feature and I can rely upon this and I would recommend that this is what the court would do, yes, I could say that. I can't say that. Okay. I do think that it's a serious issue. I think that uh, both uh, any official who, is, who has this issue uh, has to have an opportunity to address it as well as the board address it. Um, but I think the culmination, the, the, ultimate, the ultimate determination by, of residency, as I read the cases, 
is the totality of the circumstances. It's not what you say, uh, it's what you, it, it appears by the evidence to be. And what I mean that is, is that um, when you look at all of the evidence and you have to then make a determination, uh, where is this person's quote residence? And uh, that's it, that's, uh, you know, there's, there's no, um, uh, We're not in violation of anything if we do nothing. Is that I, correct? I, I don't think you're, quote, in violation of anything. That's correct. I think that, um, um, but the issue of qualifications to hold office and continue to hold office, one of those elements, and I, I pointed out. I know. That's what you brought up to us back in, in October and November, and the board was aware of all such circumstances, and we did discuss it. Is yes. that not true? You were here. Yeah, I was here, and, okay. and no. I mean, was there anything wrong with our discussion that maybe you should have I, I, pointed not, out that we weren't doing it properly? I wouldn't comment wrong. I would. I would have thought that there would have been more discussion and uh, moving towards a resolution of the issue. To me, the issue was not resolved, um, and I don't think it's resolved as of now. I, I don't think that's resolved. Again, we don't know. You this just came up. Between well, the, the second of April, you said. I agree, and, because, and today, and because I thought it was of such consequence, I dropped everything I had to do on August. I mean, on April second, I addressed it immediately. I did the same thing on April third, and I did the same thing yesterday. I wish I, some of the other issues that we brought to you could be handled that properly. Well, you know, I, you know, I, I, I don't can, you know, that's. Uh, I know it's which one has priority. I mean, I, I mean, when when I when we get a letter from the Bureau of the Director of Elections. You also have in your packet. And it just came randomly in the mail? No, it was communicated to me when, when the director of the I bureau. Mean, he, he knew about this in Lansing and randomly sent it to you? 22 pages of Lori contacting this person, that person. There's <clears throat> exhibit one, two, three, four. Um, she pursued this. She's Even though we had already discussed this in November, is that correct? My understanding is, is that. That's uh, what I'm reading. Okay. Or I'll say Lori Russellberg. Well, you also have uh, in there that you also have a request by a citizen uh, to the, uh, allegedly, I don't know, it's to the prosecuting attorney and also to the attorney general on a quote warrant or action on the issue of residency as well. Have we gotten and, any response to those? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. But I would say this, um, Lori's the chief election official of the township and I do not see anything of any uh, any wrong with respect to her taking this issue oh, to the that. election bureau because she's the one that deals with the election bureau she's the one that's given the voter registration list and she's the one that needs to be concerned about her responsibilities in that particular position and so the fact that it was raised to the to the uh, bureau of elections um, is, is perfectly appropriate mm -hmm. I don't see anything wrong with that and I don't think see anything wrong with the Bureau of Elections responding to it. Uh, they didn't respond, evidently it was raised in December or, or earlier, and it wasn't responded until just recently, and it may have had to do something with the citizen's complaint and not a request from the township. Um, and if you ask Ken why it's a priority, you know, I, I, uh, I think it's because you got a state agency who is saying that in their position, the treasurer of Cottrell Township is has a self-executed vacancy. Now, whether that's correct or not, I'm not, I'm not here to say. I don't know if the treasurer said that or not, but if it took the state from December to April to respond, and it took you from the second till today to come up with all of this, I don't think it's that major of an issue that we have to slow up everything else for the township right now, is it? Can we not look into it, just bring it to our attention so we can research it a little bit more ourselves? It I, sort I, of seems like it has been pushed on our throat here in the last six days. Um, the only issue, first of all, the issue was raised in October. It was discussed that on October 17th, I sent the correspondence. November 12th meeting, it was briefly discussed. And you were here? Yes. And, and again, if we did not handle it properly, wouldn't it have been your position to informed us or brought that to our attention as we were discussing it then? I don't make the determination of what you should or should not do. That's what you were here for that night. No, I'm not here to, to address 
to you what you should or should not do. If you had any questions for me about my correspondence or about my recommendation, I would be glad to respond to it. But we I have never... You, you, we did what you recommended to us prior to the meeting. I, 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 and I, we met it. Yes. John, you were right there. You told us how Ken, to address Ken, it. Ken, what's your point? I mean, is well, your what's point... my point is you're trying to give us this in six days. We addressed it in November, the last time you brought it to our attention. I, I recommended that you address this. So you're recommending because that you again have, this time, then, Because correct? you have a state agency who is, who is making a statement with respect to the I move position. We, we, do, we postpone this discussion for at least 30 days so everybody can kind of swallow some of this instead of having it as one big pill in six days. And I don't see anything wrong with that. And again, my, I my, don't either, but my position was not to, but I don't think that once that's raised, I do think it does I think have, we need have to a address priority. It. I that's, think it does have a priority. I'm just asking for 30 days so everybody yeah, can. That's, that's fine. I don't have any I don't Is have there any anything wrong with that? No, I don't think so at all. Can I add to that, please? With a second? Oh, I'm sorry, oh. that's a motion? Is that me? Is that a motion? Yeah, I made a motion that we just we postpone any more discussion or motion or any actions on this for 30 days to our next meeting, so we can all kind issue. of swallow this. Motion to address this issue at the next board meeting. Do you have a question, or you want to? Is that what you're question? Okay. All right. Do I have a second? You had a question. Yeah, John, I have a question. As soon as we're done with the motion. You're going to ask a question first? Or? No, I, I can't hear a motion. Can I second? I second. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, yeah, there's discussion on that. In, in regards to giving you 30 days, I don't know what 30 days more can do except add more paper, but in looking at the election law requirements, a registered elector must be a resident of that jurisdiction once they sit. She doesn't under her own admission, under her own, as it said, self-executing. Don't we, as sworn in members representing this township, take an oath of office to the state of Michigan and the United States to uphold those laws? And isn't that a law that we should uphold? I, again, the, the issue is, is whether or not the specifics, if you look at the, um, um, the statute is a little bit un, unclear because it clearly states that you're to follow the uh, specific sex section 11, which talks about where you put your head at night, that kind of mm -hmm. language. And then at the end it says, however, this doesn't change any of our um, determination of residency by the courts, that, that there's courts interpretation. So that issue, I'm not sure exactly how it would be decided. I don't think it's clear cut. Um, the director in our discussions, uh, they've taken the position that they tied the motor vehicle uh, laws and, and in terms of the change of address with the Secretary of State to automatic changing the voter registration. And, and uh, and uh, I think that is a, uh, um, you know, the intention there might have been to do what he's suggesting it is, is that once you change that, but they also, I'm not so sure that the legislature perhaps intended the same consequence because a person who moves for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, that haven't necessarily renounced their residency, but it's a state law for the state of, uh, for the driver's license says you should change your driver's license that triggers an automatic voter registration change. I'm not sure that was the intended result. Those are arguments, but I'm not sure uh, that's what it was. Someone, uh, again, uh, this issue evidently has not come up specifically to the Bureau of Elections before, according to the knowledge of the director. Uh, and there's no specific case law on that. I researched, I asked him if he knew of any. He said he did not. Um, it is a murky area in that sense, but I think ultimately, the term that under either, uh, even under the, 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 the court's interpretation of residency, it boils down to a question of fact. Now, you have to, 
you know, you say it's kind of the determiner's effect. You have to weigh the evidence as to whether a person is a resident or not. And I think that uh, the Bureau of Elections saying this is self-executing, that negates any statement of residency otherwise. I'm not sure I agree with that position. But I do think the totality of the circumstances, and I've discussed this, you know, I pointed these issues out, where you receive your mail, you know, where you physically reside, uh, you know, the schools, where, where your schools, your children attend schools, where you're uh, registered to vote, where your um, driver's license indicates. All of these factors come into weighing um, what your residency is. I, I agree, and as I say, that all of those issues and knowing those answers to those answers, the registered elect must be a resident. Right. And don't we then as a board have under our, our oath of office the responsibility to make, take action on that? Yeah. The, or we're in neglect. The Bureau of, of but I think you can, you, but I think you're allowed to deliberate on that subject. Um, you know, there's no, um, um, you know, I, I, and I'll give you this, and I, I think I, uh, um, you know, there, are, it's at section uh, 2031 that talks about when a vacancy occurs and the, um, and it uses, it, that particular statute says it can happen when you have a death, a resignation, and subsection four says when you no longer inhabit, it doesn't even use the term residence, it says when you no longer inhabit uh, the jurisdiction in which you're serving, okay? So that's a different term that's used, in, inhabit, and there's no, they don't define the term inhabit uh, un, under that section of 201.3, uh, which talks about when, I think it's 201.3, that talks about when a vacancy occurs. So um, I think the board has to make the decision now. I'm not suggesting you do it in haste because it's an important decision. You've got an elected official who was elected by the public to serve, and then you have a question of you making a decision as a board whether that person has vacated their position or not, depending on what you determine to be their residence. Well, that's fine. I was only asking for 30 days. I don't have any problem with that. I'm not suggesting that. But I do, but I do think that you need to look well, at I'm these sure. issues. I'm well, we, sure. I'm sure we will. You're correct, sir. It's MCL 201.34 states that a vacancy occurs when an official no longer is an inhabitant of the township which the duties of the official's office are required to be discharged. And, and what happened to intent? That was used a lot in November. I still say that's a determination, but your intent is not just what you say. It is what, it, what the evidence supports. And... Um, and I've, ex and I've said that time and time again. Now, when I gave my position on this, and I cited the Supreme Court, and in fact, you'll, you saw in my letter, when I responded in my letter, I suggested, I, I, I surely hope that the liaison director wasn't suggesting that I had set the standard. I said that was set by the Supreme Court. Now, but the Bureau of Elections is saying that they're looking at the simple fact of the change of voter registration being a self-execution of vacancy. Now, I'm not saying I necessarily agree with that position. Uh, ultimately, that's beyond my pay grade because a court will make that determination if that, if that is challenged. But, um, you know, I, and I have told you this, Sandy, you know, in verbal conversation, I've told you just simply because you say something, you have to support it with documentation or evidence to support what your residency is. And it has to be persuasive to either this board or to a court, uh, ultimately. The Bureau was taking just a position that this is, is, uh, uh, is self-executing. Right. Now, can I say I disagree with them? Uh, the Bureau, I mean, you know, the gentleman's been the head of the Bo uh, Bureau of Directions for, since the 80s, so I'm, that's, a, that's a fairly long time. I, you know, but he does, they do concede that, that it's the board that makes this determination initially. But he did say, even though they anticipate no proceeding, he did say that he, he cannot envision a situation where a township doesn't take action when in fact there is a vacancy created by whatever circumstances. I guess we all thought we had. 
that's, I think that was. Well, I, I, what I point out to you is you now have a, a bureau that, that uh, that's a state bureau suggesting that there is a vacancy. Now that ha that was not the circumstance before. Mm -hmm. And I think you do have to take that into account. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, John. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so, Lori, can you restate the motion, please? To postpone this until next month's meeting. And Sandy second? Correct. Any more discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Okay. Item number two. Uh, discussion of state of the township budget with Plant Moran. <clears throat> Nathan is here from Plant Moran, and we're just going to talk a little bit about where Cotcherville stands right now as far as our budget. So I was asked to come and just kind of discuss the budget trends for Cotcherville Township. Um, one thing to point out, I have not um, worked with the 2015-16 budget, and we have not audited the fiscal year 15, but um, this is more of a general discussion from the past about five years as the trends of the um, township and kind of some um, trends with other townships, uh, suggestions and items that can be uh, looked at. <coughs> 2010 was the last year that Catcherville had a surplus budget, um, about $60,000. And since 2010, um, every year, 2011, 12, 13, and 14, um, you guys had a deficit budget. And the main, one of the main reasons for this, in 2010, there's $151,000 of property tax revenue. And up to 2014, you're down to budgeted at 85. Last year, it was about 79,000. So you cut your property tax revenue almost in half over those uh, five years, which has uh, made it a lot more difficult to um, have a surplus budget. As far as revenues go, since 2011, um, they've been pretty steady at about $430,000. And your main two revenues for your, for your general fund are your property tax and your state shared revenue. Um, there are some other miscellaneous items in there, um, permits and miscellaneous fees charged to, charged to residents, but um, your main two drivers are gonna be your state shared revenue and uh, property tax revenue. These, as you guys um, are aware, are not expected to be increasing very dr drastically over the next uh, or the foreseeable future. Uh, two to three percent would probably be a high estimate as far as revenues, uh, state shared revenues and proper tax revenues. Um, so since 2011, on average, it's been about $60,000 of a deficit. Um, we would call this kind of a structural budget deficit since your revenues are basically flatlined at this point without doing anything else for the township, but your expenditures, they're, they're very year to year, but roughly 500000 There hasn't been any drastic changes um, between expenditures from year to year. A couple of things that, um, I mean, as a township, you need to look at it. If revenues aren't going to change, with some sort of millage or um, increases in like permit fees, expenses are the next, next thing that need to be managed. Um, another thing that can be looked at is cross-charging between different funds. For instance, the garbage fund right now has two, uh, roughly $250,000 of cash. If there's employees that work in the general fund but are working on garbage-related issues, it is appropriate to charge the garbage fund for the services of the employees to um, as long as you can support the charges between between uh, special revenue funds and the general fund um, one uh, another item as that's kind of touch on would kind of be a minimum fund balance um, that the township could could have this i mean there is no right or wrong answer as far as a minimum fund balance but one thing kind of that we look at is, so property tax revenue comes in once a year. Uh, it's levied in, Dece in December and it's collected in the first quarter of, um, of the fiscal, or not fiscal year, but calendar year. So 
at year end, we would expect fund balance to be at least 75% of your property tax revenue that you expect to receive for the year. And then roughly at least uh, two months worth of expenditures. So um, your budget did right now in 2015 at about 85,000 of property tax revenue. So we'd expect around 60,000 to be in your fund balance as of March 31st. And then two months of expenditures, which you budgeted right now for roughly 500,000 of expenditures. So roughly another uh, $85,000. So as a bare minimum, just for liquidity purposes, um, that you should at, at least have that much in your fund balance as of uh, March 31st. Anything above that, you have to basically look at if if something were to go around go awry in the township, mm -hmm. would you have the cash to support like a major repair? Um, if you're functioning at that lowest level that I just gave, um, and something goes wrong and you need a hundred thousand dollars to fix uh, issue, would you guys be able to do it? Um, would you be able to get financing if need be, or um, use the general fund fund balance at that point? So. It's something to consider as far as that, the numbers I'm giving you are kind of bare minimum, but you have to also uh, look, at, look at other potential issues that could, uh, could arise within the township. And if you know, for, for instance, uh, even let's say 2016, 17, you're gonna need a major capital purchase, then you're gonna have to build that into your kind of minimum fund balance that you want in hand. So if you're keeping it at the lowest level and then you need to buy a dump trucker, for instance, uh, through the general fund, um, could you? Probably not if you're operating at the lowest level. Um, one other item I want to point out, adopting a balanced budget doesn't necessarily mean revenues and expenses are equal. Um, it's more or less, it means you don't go below zero in your fund balance. So it's not illegal to use fund balance, but like I said, at this point, it's kind of a structural deficit. Sooner or later, if you do nothing, the fund balance will be zero. And then that's when, uh, when you really get in trouble as far as trying to recoup uh, fund balance and operate on a surplus year after year to uh, have cash for the general fund. But those were the only main points I wanted to touch on. I don't know if you have any uh, questions, you have any budget questions related. Matt? So just to, to summarize, with the fund balance totals we have now, the uh, revenue and expenditures we have now, if we don't do something within a few years, we're, we're in very poor position. If Correct. things, if the trend continues the way it is. If the trend continues, um, over the last four years, 2011, it's um, averaged out to about $60,000 every year that you're getting into your fund balance. As of uh, March 31st, 2014, our, the fund balance was 400000 So, I mean, you can, you can do the math if, uh, if you keep up uh, that same, same trend. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not in dire circumstances right now by any means, but three more years down the road, four more years down the road, if you continue operating at that same same level, um, that could, uh, could eat away at your fund balance and be a, be a bigger issue at that point. Okay. Ken, did you have anything? Uh, no, not at this time. No, no, okay, thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Item number, I'm just going to use this list, four. Motion to approve administrative fine order from DEQ. Do we get one?
What's that? It's right here. Ultimately, where's the amount? I'm sorry? Well, not reading the whole thing. Where is the amount for the oh. fine? Page two. Page two of John's letter. Right. Well, John's yeah. letter. 500. Yeah. So we uh, went to Lansing to uh, talk with the DEQ regarding the fines. And the asbestos issue that was at the waterfront park and ultimately what it ended up costing the township was a $500 administrative fine. So it is John's recommendation that the township board um, authorize payment of $500 administrative fine to the DEQ. I move that we, we uh, pay the DEQ their $500 fine because it's actually kind of a a nice slap on the hand, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's I'll second. Second. You second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Roll call vote. Oh, yeah. Roll call. <laughs> Matt? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Ken? Yes. Lori? Yes. Sandy? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to award contracts for removal of debris at Waterfront Park. Do we all have that one? <coughs> Hi, Simon. Good evening. Well, wish everybody had a happy Easter. <laughs> kind of changed the tone over here. Um, <laughs> In your packet, you should have a, a copy of my letter addressed to the supervisor dated March 31st, 2015. It's basically a tabulation of the bids received for the asbestos removal. And um, we tabulated two bidders, uh, Blue Star and uh, ML Chartier. Blue Star was the low bidder of 47500 And um, based on... Uh, our review of the bids and uh, prior experience with uh, Blue Star, uh, we recommend that the township award this uh, contract to Blue Star as the low bidder uh, for the asbestos removal and demolition of the garage. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we award the contract for the removal of debris at the waterfront park to Blue Star, who was the lowest bidder. For $47,500. Anybody second? I'll second that. Discussion? As for the contractors that were there, and we've had a past situation. Has John okayed their insurance or bond, everything to verify it from from the bidders? Mm -hmm. Okay, Correct. is that right, John? Have you verified it or everything? I mean, are you satisfied? 
that we won't have an issue later? Yeah, John did not review the contract. We put the contract documents together and we reviewed it. We verified that there is a, a bond submitted and the insurance is satisfactory for that low bidder. It's a construction project. That's what normally we do. If you would like the attorney to review that document, that's... Without, without it being a personal issue, has John ever verified your insurance and your bond issues or qualifications? Well, when they Two million, I think, Two million aggregate. Yes. And I'm assuming that that's been filed with the township. Correct. So there should be a record in the township of that amount. Because when I approved the contract, one of the issues that I uh, pointed out was that there had to be adequate uh, liability coverage, and that was uh, that was within the contract. The policy of that should be. Correct. What what Ken is asking? Yeah. What Ken is asking is if Blue Star had submitted satisfactory. Well, I, first I asked about Blue Star, and you right. said they submitted it to you. Yes. It, it's part of the bid. Well, okay. Yeah. But the, yeah, because I saw that on the part of the bid. Right. As long as John's happy and, and he gives you a thumbs up, because like I said, due to some history here. It's too late to ask for that afterwards. So whatever it is that you've got, if you could just absolutely verify that to him so that it's verified, uh, and he tells us he's satisfied with everything besides what you filed with the township. Absolutely. I mean, you could you could actually file your car insurance with us, and it is an insurance certificate. Yeah, we have we have a copy of the policy here. But that's what I'm saying. It's for it's for John to say it, so we don't go to him later and say what happened. We already did. Oh, no. but I, but I, it isn't an attorney review of the policy itself. It's whether or not the coverage is applicable. And whether the bid specifications, I assume, if you have bid specifications that require certain amounts of liability coverage. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you have verified with the agency that that's its existence. Yes. And I, and I think that's that. Just as long as everybody isn't pointing at somebody else, if something were to, to not go properly. Noted. Well, that's all I'm asking. That, you know, you being our attorney, we feel comfortable after you give everybody the thumbs up. We, we don't recommend execution of the contract if we don't see all these documents and verify all these well, requirements. Well, I understand it's tremendous. It's nothing personal. Absolutely. But our last engineer maybe didn't have quite everything filed properly. So we just want to have John verify at this time. So we don't have an issue. That's all I'm asking. If you're taking blue stars, that's fine. That's fine. We're just going to take, we're going to question yours. Is there any other discussion? No. Nope. Yeah, we recommend, actually, we are recommended that the town, <laughs> just a point of clarification, we recommended that the township enter into a contract with blue star, awarding blue star for the removal of the asbestos and the uh, debris from the garage also. This is not a contract between my firm and Blue Star. It's between the township and Blue Star directly. You're entering into a contract based on the state law to remove that um, debris. And we put the specs together, uh, and we've received bids, we examined the bids, we publicly opened them, and Blue Star is low, the low bidder satisfying all the contract requirements. And we have verified Blue Star's insurance? They we did. No, but he says we're entering in the contract directly with Blue Star. They said that they were. Who's, who's, on, the, who's mm -hmm. on the hook if there's a hiccup? You've got the insurance from Blue Star. We've got your insurance from here, and there's a problem with Blue Star. 
Our insurance has nothing to do with this. Okay. Well, all I'm asking then is Blue Star going to submit the same insurance to the township if we're entering in a contract direct with them. Correct. Blue Star Somewhere someone's going to be liable. Correct. Blue Star that's has all a, I'm asking. Blue Star has a policy, that, and that's, that's fine, Ken. Has it been issued to us yet? Yes. At the town, name in the township as additional name insured. So you are protected if anything happened by, the, by Blue Star Verified policy. Verified by you, but not by the township. That's all I'm asking. Whoever, somebody's going to have to be able to answer if there's a problem. That's all I'm asking. And if, and if it's not going to be you if there's a problem because he's got a contract with us direct, we need to, to also Absolutely. just verify it. Is that not correct? Absolutely. The way that we do, we've done this uh, in the past is this is, a, this is a, recommended, a recommendation for an award. That doesn't mean they can start tomorrow. There is a contract to be executed. And they need to supply the insurance and the bonds again to the township for a review. And I suggest that you forward that to your attorney, if that makes you feel comfortable. Have John look at it and give you the th thumbs up That's so we, yeah. the clerk and the supervisor can execute the contract. We don't execute anything. All we're doing, we put the bid specs together, and we review the bids, and we are making recommendation for this That's company to you be awarded. He, he gave the insurance certificate to you. I do have a copy, okay. but we're here not to review their insurance or bonds. We're here to recommend the award of the contract. So if you can, if you're satisfied with Blue Star. We're you, satisfied with the price. We just want the verification of everything. We don't want a situation sure. again afterwards like we have encountered in the past. That's sure. all I'm asking. Sure. You can, and tell me the procedure for doing it or John can. That's fine. You can, uh, you can Do we award the contract in hopes that they've got that? Well, you're awarding the contract based upon the contract's specs. Mm -hmm. And part of those specs is they have to have that insurance. So if, if they can produce that policy with us endorsed, then we can contact the agency and make sure that that policy is in force. So do we... Can you pull a contract back if, for some reason, you didn't you're get everything the, approved? If you're awarding the contract, and part of the contract specs are they must have adequate liability coverage to the extent that you have required in the contract, and they don't produce it, then they haven't met the contract specs, so that contract is... So then the contract's not. Absolutely. Okay, that's all I'm asking. Just... Absolutely. So everybody isn't looking down the road at somebody else. Absolutely. If there's a situation. Nothing against Blue Star. Thank you. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Kelly. Yes. Ken. Yes. Lori, yes. Sandy. Yes. Matt. Yes. Motion carries. Now may I ask another question? Sure. Where are we going to get the money? That will be at our next meeting. Okay, just a point of clarification now. We did uh, get your um, okay to approve this contract. We're going to get these contract documents executed by both Cotterville Township and Blue Star. Uh, Blue Star has, once we get everybody's signature on them, we're going to issue them a letter saying you are hereby authorized to mobilize within 10 days. Now, they need, they need a, an executed contract before they can mobilize. Uh, once we send that, I guess the, the board has authorized the, super, the supervisor as a representative of the township to enter into a contract with Blue Star so they can move ahead. Otherwise, they are going to sit still. Um, I need to uh, make a motion for adjournment for a minute. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a motion, uh, make a motion to take a break, a five minute break. I'll second. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay. Are you voting All in? Favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Opposed. <laughs> Call the meeting back to order at 901. We left off on.
Okay, motion for supervisor to apply for an easy grant from Community Foundation. Um, what the Community Foundation is, is it's a, a foundation, obviously, that awards grants to different communities. Uh, basically, what they're awarding, their two priorities for this current grant is community and economic development and education. Um, they're also actively supporting efforts and basic needs in human services and arts and cultures. Well, Sandy and I happened upon this uh, statement from them last year, and we contacted Bill Graytop and we asked him what we could do with this. It was showing a uh, ending holdings balance of $12,600. So, I contacted Bill Graytop and he said they no longer use that fund. And I asked him, was there another way that, or another fund that they do use that we could ask for help with cleaning up the waterfront park? So, along came the easy grant. And so the motion to approve the easy grant for the community foundation is for me to fill out the grant and I'm gonna ask the um, community foundation for $12,600 um, to go towards cleaning up the waterfront park. We're gonna start small and then you can always ask for more later, which I intend to. <laughs> <Hopefully>. <laughs> I wanted to ask for the whole shebang, but they said that's not a good idea. Start small. Then, Samrat, are you familiar with the Easy Grant? Um, we haven't applied for that specific grant before, but it's what it said. It's a, the Easy Grant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's money set aside for uh, things like this uh, to help out the communities. And and if, we, if we can get this, that would be great. So it's very simple to apply for. It is. It's a pretty easy one. And um, we have the total costs, and I think we'll do uh, fairly well at it, being that the park has um, the EPA, the DEQ, the MDNR, um, you know, all those different entities. So anyway, so yes, this You certainly qualify to apply for it, and right. hopefully we can get it. So that's the gist of that. So that being said. I'll make a motion for the supervisor to apply for the easy grant from the Community Foundation. I'll second that. Any discussion? Is there a match on this? Not on this. Yeah. Zero match. Yeah, match. No. no match. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much. Well. Item number seven, motion to approve the painting of the water pump stations. Sewer stations. Sewer stations. I make a motion to accept. Which bid? There's three oh. different bids. Well. Cheapest one. All right, IPC. Mm -hmm. Make a grant to accept the uh, IPC services bid for painting the three stations at six thousand per, totaling eighteen thousand dollars. Now second. Any discussion? Being none. Yeah, well, yeah. One. Does, does this interfere with anything Sir Med's doing with the uh, saw grant work? Um, 
We, we did talk to uh, your DPW. Um, he would like to move on it really quick. Um, the saw grant is not going to be awarded until, well, the bids are due on April 23rd. Uh, hopefully, you know, by the time you award this, uh, they'll be done. Yeah, but I mean, your your stuff will not affect the newly painted surfaces. No, uh, actually, the saw grant does not even take into account any but of the I pump mean, stations. But I you're not down the same hole where they... Not the pump stations. Doing okay. Yeah. We're going to be in the pipes and the manholes, but not the pump stations. And there are only five pump stations. They'll, they'll be in and out, paint them, clean them, paint them. And we did talk to uh, um, the prospective bidders. We told them that this is coming uh, forth. So if there is a scheduling issue, we'll, we'll coordinate with both contractors so they don't uh, be bumping into each other in the field. This is totally coordinated by UDPW. That's good. Okay, thank you. Cool. Any other discussion? Okay, Matt made the motion. I seconded. All in favor? Roll vote. Roll vote. Roll vote. I knew you were going to say that. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh>. Ken? Yes. <laughs> Lori? Yes. Sandy? Yes. Matt? Yes. Kelly? Yes. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Um, I'd like to table the phone system. I forgot about that when we're going through the list, only because um, I was made aware of a, another phone company this morning, and when I contacted the gentleman, he would not have enough time to give us a proper quote. And this company, China, Kimball, Clyde, and Columbus Township, I'll use their phone systems and they're similar in size. Um, so I would just like to be in that, you know, the other quotes that we have were <coughs> six and seven thousand dollars. I'd like to see um, if we can get something. We don't, I don't think we need all the bells and whistles. So I'd like to see what he has to offer and uh, put this on for next month. Okay. I will make a motion to table it until next month. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. This next one is the renewal of ABC for the porta potty for the um, township park. I didn't. Um, it would still. It would be the same for the waterfront park if we feel the need to add one. I'm not quite sure when we want to do that, so I figured we'd start with the one at the township park and then see. Same price it was before. Yep. Yeah. Same price. I'll make a motion we approve ABC of the porta potty at the Township Hall Park. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Roll call. Roll call. Lori, yes. Sandy? Yes. Matt? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Ken? Yes. <clears throat> okay, I'll get that. Okay, motion to buy a reporter for the Planning Commission not to exceed $50. I'll make a motion that we get a new taper, a new reporter for the Planning Commission. I'll second. Oh, we skipped it. All right. Any discussion? All in favor? Roll call. <laughs> Sandy. <laughs> yes. Matt. Yes. Kelly. Yes. Ken. Yes. Lori. Yes. I went on an order by accident. Motion uh, to amend Cotterville Township website. 
disclaimer. Um, so basically what we have for that one is the, um, Pat recommended the uh, part that's in black and then what's in red is what um, John had on there. So we just combined the two so that way we're still able to have our committees and commissions uh, put stuff in, in general on there, not just so much minutes in that. Can I talk to the minutes? Do you want me to read it? Yeah. The whole thing, or just the part before? Thing. Sure, the whole thing will say, Cotcheville Township's website is intended to communicate and inform residents. We will do our best to post information for the public, but due to a limited staff and their time constrictions, we cannot always guarantee that it will be up to date. We appreciate your understanding. This website is not intended to, nor shall it post monthly or frequent I'm sorry, more frequent updates of public meetings or minutes or public notes of regularly scheduled or non-regularly scheduled meetings of Cotterville Townships. Meeting notices, regular or non-regular, agendas or minutes will be posted at the Cotterville Township Hall with the address and an so area of because they make a comment that um, a Okay, do you want to look into that? With regard to that, the um, Open Meetings Act language, I believe, said if you regularly update and on the cloud, we don't even post anything. So it's not like we're already posting. It's, I believe it's the caveat for if you've been doing it, then you have to upkeep it. And with, the, with regard to the Minutes on Demand, that's a data retrieval website, it's not a posting website. That's not what she said. She said, I told her about the cloud and I'm in your opinion. And she said that indirectly you're, you're, I have a presence on the website because you can go from our website to the cloud or in their scan to the cloud for minutes on demand. And we will be putting an update on minutes on demand. And she said because she said that the wording is direct or indirect. And she said I don't think that that is indirect well, we can look into it. Okay. I can look into that with um, the minutes on demand thing. Okay, so Lori. Let me make a note. So, okay. Hold on. So in the meantime, I guess, is for us to change it to add this right here. Pat's beginning and then John's ending. The combination. Well, we need a motion for that. Yep. Well, I'll make a motion that we allow Lori to look into amending the disclaimer on the Cotswold Township website. I believe this is the right. this is the language that she's looking for the approval on, and then I'm just going to check into the uh, 
Catherine Mulhall so and the Minutes on Demand. So you so make a motion that to pass this right, right. now. Right. Okay. But I'm going to look into whether or not it's it's going to make a difference on the Minutes on Demand of having our stuff. Oh, okay. Minutes then I make demand. a motion that we amend the disclaimer on the Cotterville Township website. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, motion to appoint Janelle Schneider to Parks and Recreation Committee. Now, do you want to come up and introduce yourself or anything? Hello, everyone. I apologize for the being in this here here. I'm Janelle Schneider, um, shortcut road just down the street. Uh, I used to be on the Parks and Art Committee a number of years ago. I've been a resident for 10 years. Um, I want to see some things happening at the park. It's not being utilized to its full potential, as we all know. And um, I thought I could maybe be a part of that solution to get some things rolling, I want to help the others that are part of this committee, as well as maybe recruit other citizens that are interested in getting that park utilized by your kids. So, I'll be at the meetings, hopefully, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to appoint Janelle Schneider, Schneider to the Parks and Recreation Committee. That's all I got. Any discussion? Does Parks and Rec know about it yet? <laughs> <laughs> they certainly do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Just curious. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, discussion regarding Merkel's recycling fire. Basically, they're just um, claiming that they can't afford to pay the fire costs due to hardship, and they did fill out the, the paperwork in that. They, they did not have insurance, I take it, if they're no. asking for this? And... Is Mr. Markle here? No, I don't see him. So it'd be in the amount of $2,835. Either a reduction or a cancellation of the bill is what they're asking for. There it is. Oh, it's a tip <coughs> one. It must be a big fire. <coughs> right here is a, basically what happened to him. You see it rekindled? Yeah. <laughs> so there's two accounts, it's 3,800? Right, and it, what happened was it ended up rekindling. He was billed twice because of the 
the department said they would come out the next day to check for any issues or any hot spots, and they, they did not come out, and it did reignite. So they had to be called out a second time. Is that normal? <laughs> I'm trying to think of the politically. Sorry, you I mean, would hope that doesn't happen. In my what is that, Mr. Markle's problem, or is that ours? Well, that they didn't come back up. Like any issue, I believe it becomes ours because of the billing, just asking for consideration. We have had these in the past with residents. Right. I move that we accept the uh, financial hardship. Mr. Markle. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm just thinking, Does is that, that money? Do we have to do a roll call? <laughs> <laughs> we better do one for sure. Just to be sure. Do you want me to do a roll call? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Matt? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Ken? Yes. Lori? Yes. Sandy? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Um, discussion regarding cemetery ordinance uh, board meeting. Blah, blah. We haven't had anybody really come forward. Um, for the cemetery committee, and we need to work on our sexton. There's there's a couple issues we have with the cemetery ordinance, um, <coughs> so I wanted to schedule a meeting with the, the board to discuss the cemetery. So how about by like Monday? Can we add that to the special meeting? Yeah, can we add that? <coughs> Is there information that we can look at so that we're all kind of on the same page? Can we? We have the cemetery ordinance, and we have some things that we know that the Plain Commission worked on that they had asked for us to With regard review. to the board? So um, I can get that to you guys tomorrow. Okay. And then we can add that on Monday. So we'll add that to the Monday. All right. Township-wide uh, discussion regarding township-wide foyer <coughs> ordinance that we will be working on next month, hopefully to get it on the agenda for May. And that it will be um, working with myself, hopefully Matt, um, Tom White Knight, uh, the Chiefs for Ira and um, Marine City. Acumad. I think that about covers it. So I'll be working with them all next month on that. Um, 21, Planning Commission report. The Cotterville, <coughs> excuse me, the Cotterville Planning Commission has been asked by Supervisor Caselli for an update regarding what the commission is currently working on since January of this year to, pres to the present. In January, the Planning Commission was asked to address an application for rezoning located between Marsh and King Road on 26 Mile Road from agricultural to commercial. We reviewed our master plan and zoning map to see if either one supported rezoning in the requested location. Neither supported commercial in the area. We haven't um, seen any development specifics supporting conditional rezoning. Um, we, it was also pointed out. And our understanding is there is no specific plan for this site. The owner had stated he believed having it available as commercial property would make it more attractive to sell. 
The Planning Commission is not against commercial on Marine City Highway, but we don't have the support needed to approve this request. That said, we intended to review our master plan and will be considering changes to the Marine City Highway. The January election uh, results were um, I was voted in again as chair, Lance Surdy as vice chair, and Georgia Phelan as secretary. In January, we also learned the ordinance enforcer had resigned. The commissioners discussed the proposed ordinances that had been presented to us by the ordinance enforcer and the fact that we had already addressed all of these in current ordinances. It was brought up that our need is probably about enforcement, not creating new ordinances. It was suggested that we individually research options for creating an enforcement process and share this information to review and pass our findings on to the Board of Trustees when completed. Discussion regarding the process for the master plan review began. As chair, I had been in contact with the township planning consultants regarding starting the review. This process is pr properly initiated and conducted by the planning commission. We discussed the fact that the township's contract with our planning consultants has not been renewed and would need to be in order to have them assist us throughout the process. The cost of the contract is $17,650. There was discussion that we could certainly begin our own review. We will meet with the Board of Trustees and other boards for their input after our preliminary review of reading and discussion um, is completed, as we do with all the ordinances. Each, commission, each commissioner was provided with copies of the 2020 master plan and the 2011 master plan review if they did not already have a copy. In February, a motion was made to begin our, our own review of the master plan using the 2020 master plan and the 2011 master plan review. This process will be done by reading and discussing both copies chapter by chapter. Two handouts were given to the commissioners, the uh, Michigan Associ Association of Planning regarding the review of the master plan and Marion Township regarding their master plan review. There was also discussion of the changes in the master planning uh, enabling Act regarding future land use and complete streets since our original 2020 master plan adopted June 2002. Board Representative uh, Chartier also emphasized the priority this year should be a balanced budget. We discussed that in our master plan review, we would include the master plan 2020 projections for the future that, it, that we've accomplished. Some examples are the township park and the riverfront park, the cemetery turned over to the township, and the three water districts, to name a few. Trustee Matt Kowalczyk, who attended the planning meeting, brought up a question regarding planning commission's responsibility regarding capital improvements. We agreed that there should be more research and future discussions regarding the planning commission's input. A handout enforcing your township ordinances was given to all the commissioners and they were asked to research information regarding meeting the challenges of ordinance enforcement. In March, four commissioners, Alan Jones, Lance Surday replacing Lisa Marcus Pressman, Joe Treadway and Pat Runyon by board approval attended the St. Clair Metropolitan Planning Commission 2015 annual workshop on March 31st. The sessions covered blight enforcement, emergency management planning, water trails discovering your hidden assets, and transportation revenue ballot op option. Our master plan review 2015 process checklist was handed out, and this is our uh, checklist of how we will um, go about the master plan review. And we're gonna read the master plan and discuss, read the master plan review 2011 and discuss, items for possible amending or additions to the master plan, discuss 26 mile road zoning, joint meeting with the Board of Trustees and Township Boards, uh, Attorney McNamee and Clear Zoning input for changes, finish master plan review 2015 paperwork, mail master plan review 2015 to local townships for their viewpoint input if needed, public hearing review possible adjustments, send the final master plan to the uh, St. Clair Metropolitan Planning Commission and the Board of Trustees review for adoption. A timeline will be addressed regarding the master plan review in the very near future. The Verizon cell tower, this is our latest, um, latest thing that we've been working on. The Verizon Varellen conditional rezoning for a future cell tower has been an ongoing discussion since early fall of 2014. The Planning Commission has been long awaiting a formal application for this project. Verizon's attorney, Robert LaBelle, and our township attorney, John McMee, have been communicating on the process for many months. On March 1st, 
2015, an application was filed for a site plan review and conditional rezoning. Fees were paid and all the necessary, necessary paperwork submitted. Over previous months, Township Attorney John McNamee has explained to the Planning Commission that the Tele Telecommunications Act of 1996 governs and supersedes all local zoning and discuss the requirements for placement of the cell tower in conjunction with the Telecommunications Act of 96 and Cotterville's Communication Tower Ordinance 132.1326. Mr. McNamee explained that the proposal cannot be refuted based on the fact that someone or a group of people do not like the way the tower looks. Rep representatives from Verizon gave a presentation at our March meeting at the planning uh, meeting on March 25th, discussing how they concluded that the Varellan property was the best proposed site for their tower. Mr. LaBelle explained that a study was conducted in the area based on Verizon customer complaints and that areas were tested for dead zones and drop services. Mr. B LaBelle explained that Verizon is receiving a massive amount of service complaints from Verizon customers in the area of Cotterville who experienced drop calls, roaming um, calls to Canada, and simply no service. Their findings demonstrated that the Varellan property generated the best service compensa compensating for the losses. Mr. LaBelle explained that once Verizon installs the cell tower under the Telecommunications Tele Act of 96, other companies are allowed to piggyback on the tower, and that space on the tower is required for that very purpose. Mr. Avery discussed the stability of a monopole, which is the type of tower that would be erected on the property. And the, a monopole collapses on to itself and advised that there has not been any instances of a monopole ever falling down on its own, uh, or uh, tower hmm, falling down uh, on its own as a result of the uh, tornado. Mr. Avery also advised that the tower sites are self-sustaining. They are visited twice every month by technicians for the purpose of checking switches and equipment. A generator is supplied on the site as a backup in the event of a power outage. A secured fence will surround the tower, which is a security monitor. Health concerns were also discussed, and it was explained by Mr. Avery that the cell tower is a non-ionizing radiation tower. The tower emits electromagnetic radiation and would emit less than one millionth of an electron volt. Overall, there is no causal link to any health issues. The Varellan property is presently zoned residential and would need to be conditioned rezoned to agricultural to comply with Cotterville's communication tower ordinance, followed by a special land use permit and a site plan approval. There will be a public hearing with notifications to neighbors within 300 feet of the site and a public notice in the papers 15 days prior to the public hearing. Following the public hearing, the Planning Commission will make recommendation to the Board of Trustees. If in favor of the project, the recommendation and all necessary information will be sent to St. Clair Metropolitan Planning Commission for examination. St. Clair Planning will make a recommendation if any changes need to be made within 30 days, at which time the Cotterville Board of Trustees will motion to approve or disapprove the proposed Verizon cell tower on the Varellan property. A public hearing to address conditional rezoning, special land use, and site plan review for the Verizon tower on the Varellan property on Broadbridge Road is scheduled for April 22, 2015 at 7 p.m. at the Cotterville Township Hall prior to the Planning Commission regular meeting at 7.30. Notices have been published in the Sunday Times Herald on April 5, 2015 and the Voice News on April 8, 2015. And I have a copy for every one of you. And the Historical Society. Good evening. My name is Don Kittle, and I'm the president of the Cotterville Historical Society. Um, on the 31st of March, we received a request from the township supervisor to make a presentation of our activities uh, at this meeting. Uh, I find it a little odd that it didn't make the agenda when it was requested by the supervisor <coughs> less than a week ago. Pardon me? I, we, we sent an issue that there would be 
presentation made. Forwarded to me again, and I still haven't received it. I got a copy of it, so I don't know how but you did. That's didn't. good. That you that's got one. So, anyway, I didn't. As requested by the supervisor, we're happy to provide the following update on the recent activities of the Cottreville Historical Society. The Historical Society is, an, was, is organized as an independent nonprofit association under the laws of the state of Michigan. Uh, the Township Historical Society was founded on March 2nd. 2006 by Dennis and Ida Bozinski, and the purpose of the society is to preserve, advance, and disseminate knowledge of the history of the Cottreville Township for those seeking gene genealogy, uh, physical, or historical information about citizens or events. Uh, the historical society may engage in activities on its own in cooperation with other agencies, local or otherwise. Our historical society holds monthly meetings as scheduled by the officers. The society continues to pursue the following projects. We have worked on several projects relating to the two township cemeteries. We are currently working to uncover the history of the original settlers of the township. These people are the settlers who filed the original private claims that were located along the banks of the St. Clair River and whom were the original residents of Cottreville Township. When it, is, uh, when it was founded. We would like to publish this information in a pamphlet if we can uncover adequate information on these people. We continue to work on the histori historical families of the local area for our f uh, family tree, which is displayed in the lobby. I think most people who come in are aware of that. Um, this display has been updated several times over the last three years. And after the initial display, the information is pic uh, and pictures are moved into the flip chart also in the lobby for future reference and uh, observation by people coming into the township. We periodically send information and pictures to the editor of the Thumbprint News, which are published in their monthly paper. These are usually pictures requiring readers to provide or requesting readers to provide information about the personal location or items shown in the picture. Uh, this has led to several responses about items published as well as general interest in the items that are published and local history. Um, our meetings are a forum for the discussion of items and events of historical significance to the township and surrounding area and as a way to uncover the history of our township and area. These meetings are open to the public, held in the township hall, and we publish the dates of these meetings in various township communications on the website when available and through word of mouth. Um, the Historical Society, at the request of the Supervisor Faselli, has provided and will continue to provide displays, pictures, maps, and other items around the township hall showing the historical diversity of our township. This plan would, the plan would be to display in the township hall a range of items that document the history of the people, places, and events that have been brought about or that brought the township to the current time. And I think you can look around. All of these items here have been provided, including the cabinets, uh, in, you know, the items in the cabinet by the Historical Society. Um, the Historical Society has planned in cooperation with the township supervisor to initiate access for residents to Ancestry.com, allowing residents to access information and encourage them to explore their genealogy and history both inside and outside the community. We were talking and we were sort of promised a computer and uh, software to allow that to happen. Um, the society participated in last year's Heritage Days held in Marine City with a booth displaying various items showing the history of the township. We have developed contacts in other historical organizations, our surrounding community, all of this with the goal of portraying a positive image of our township and the role it has played in the development of other communities in the area. The Historical Society would be happy to become involved with or investigate other projects that the board might suggest. We would be happy to answer any questions that the board collectively or individually might have. Contact information for the officers of the Cottrell Historical Society can be obtained from the business cards located in the table in the lobby. Uh, in the entrance hallway or from any of the township employees. Uh, respectfully submitted by the Township Historical Society. Thank you, John.
on to the engineer report. Mine is very short. <laughs> um, design projects, uh, we have three projects going on. Uh, the SAW grant, uh, we issued the plans and, 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 and specs. Uh, we, had, we held a pre-bid meeting on April 2nd. And um, the bids are still due um, on April 23rd. Um, the water system mapping, we're still on hold. We don't have the board of, um, approval on that. The asbestos removal project, we just recommended approval on that. A um, couple of grants that we, uh, we sent the board um, some information on, but we're still on hold. We don't have a go ahead on it. Just a couple of notes. Um, hearing the Plant Morant report, uh, part of the SAW grant, there is budget set aside to look at your water and sewer rates. So we will, after we go through the cleaning and televise an assessment of the system, we will revisit your water and sewer rates, specifically the sewer rates. Mm -hmm. And the SAW grant allows for uh, um, an analysis and a, a, a um, a rate development. So just uh, for the board to know that. Some of you already know that. Um, and then listening to uh, the Planning Commission Chair, uh, part of our contract is uh, uh, the engineering consultant should review any proposed site plans and engineering <coughs> plans in the future. Um, so once, once you get that submitted, I would like a copy uh, so we can so conduct, correct, so we can conduct our review and make comments back to the planning commission for a site plan approval. And then for once it's, it passes the site plan approval, it goes into construction stage, we will make uh, another review of the engineering details back to the building department before they issue their construction permit. And that's, our time is paid by the applicant. So it's not. Yes, clear zoning reviews it from uh, the zoning. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at it from the engineering standpoint. Right. Just make sure it's, you know, satisfy the township ordinance, <coughs> health, safety, and welfare. Yeah, That's would you keep the uh, site plan? Does that mean only have one per file? Every um, board member should have a copy. And I'm actually short on younger and the planning commission, so we're just, we got enough with an extra for our file. Could we get that site plan and bring the map? We take the electronic copies. If you, if you want to email it to me, that's fine. This is kind of big to scan. This is the part that I can make this easy. I'll borrow it from you and okay. return it with my letter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a normal service that we provide the township. Just make sure that they are complying with all the construction ordinance. The planning commission looks at it from site plan perspective. As far as construction details, we, we look at that, make a recommendation for a permit or not. Just a note. Thank you. Any Thank questions? You so much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Run. <laughs> uh, public comments? residents and board um, I was I was informed that uh, Kelly wanted to present presentation tonight um, I didn't I, I didn't receive it but the presentation I'm gonna give that uh, you probably won't like anyway so I'm gonna give this presentation <clears throat> it is uh, regarding the new part when I spoke to Bob Armstrong um, he's a subcontractor for the EPA, did the work over there. That he was the one, that Kelly was the one that made the decision to tear down the cabins. When you knew the historical society wanted to save a cabin, 
to do whatever they had to do for the historical society. And that was totally ignored. They also were tore down without license and permits and testing from the state. Thank you, Fred. Appreciate that. That's all right. I'm just teasing. Um, as you knew in a year in advance that this had, this had to be done, it was failed for you to do it, so the residents are going to pay dearly for your incompetent decision. And also, as regards to you, Kelly, I demanded that you resign to the embarrassment and the financial burden that you have cost the township. I really do hope that you seek the help that you need to get as a person, but I'm relaying to you this to, to you in a professional uh, manner, and I hope you understand. <clears throat> I've been a business owner for 25 years. I've worked for environmental for almost 30 years. You had the resources right here with me, and you failed to use them. Why you did, I don't know. But like you said, it's a lack of communication between me and you. To my understanding, it was brought to my attention that you and your son wanted to go out there to the park and take over parks and rec maintenance. I believe it's had nothing to do with saving the township money because we all know that that is not your priority. I believe that we're here trying to use, use it in your community service pending your drunk driving sentencing. As for the email, I told you don't email me because I don't respond. And I've heard it over the internet through people that you're saying, and you want to address the board, every time you email me, you want to send them one and say that I'm not responding. Well, I'm going to address you guys straight up. Every time she emails me, I'm not responding. I told her to call me or text me. If you want to talk to me, you call me or text me. So that's what you need to do. And I've told you not once, but a thousand times. So it, uh, you want to do it your way? You probably wish that you would have used me in my experience in environmental engineering on that new part because of what the cost is, is almost $50,000. And me as a business owner, I would have fired you. Thank you. With response to um, Tony, we've had since October numerous emails. And I'll adjust those in my supervisor's comments. Go ahead. Yep, I just want to address something from the voice today, what Lori stated. That she can pay bills on time because you don't know the ledger or budget line numbers to post the amounts to. I said, it's no wonder it took you five months to do the seven million in journal entries from the auditor. You've been in office over three years, including the year you served when Vi was recalled on some flimsy reason. When do you plan on learning the general ledger accounts? The state of Michigan has information on the uniform chart of accounts and the uniform accounting manual. Look them up. You are so set against asking for help that you've wasted three years. You could have asked the auditors, BSNA, who we pay for uh, software support, the MTA, or even called VI. When I was treasurer and I didn't know how to do the job, I would call the other treasurers, I called the county, I called MTA, and I worked with BSNA constantly. And then you also ask for help with a third person to get in your office, because you stated by always had a third person, or the previous people had a third person. I did help by in her office when I was trustee, but it was strictly doing elections, and I know Ellen helped by was, was your strictly elections? I didn't, I was in because of the elections, but I did other things. Yeah, okay. And there were other, there were other people that worked in the Well, not when I, not when I lived in the Because there were yeah. other employees. So anyway, I just wanted, but I can't believe the general ledger. 
after working three years, you don't know the numbers to use. I think everybody knows my name, but it's Alan Burns, and I live on Shea Road, across from the famous stables. <laughs> um, out of all this that we have today on our plate, there's one thing that keeps getting my, to my goat, keeps getting me mad, okay, all the time, and I've addressed this for quite some time. That's the fire authority. Now, we're talking about uh, recycling fire. We're always forgiving everybody because of hardship. They can't pay this, they can't pay that. If they don't have insurance, too bad. We're, we, you know, just giving everybody a blanket uh, excuse for not doing it. Uh, it's just like we talk about paying for stuff. Who's in charge? This has been bugging me for a while. Who's in charge of checking on fire hydrants? We had a fire on Shea Road. Of course, down at that end, there's no fire hydrants, okay? But I got one in front of my house. I try to keep it open, accessible, and cleaned, okay? But I've never seen anybody come by to check and see if it's working. And as far as the story that I was told that, well, a fire hydrant in front of your house is going to save you insurance money. That's not the case. The insurance company says no way. It depends on how close you are to a firehouse. So I don't think we should be, number one, I don't know who's supposed to check these fire hydrants, if it's a DPW or what. But I think we're going to have to get going on this fire authority because it's costing us more and more and more money than it did four or five years ago when we didn't have it. And what are we gaining from it? So in conclusion, if you want to grant somebody a hardship, why don't you do it for me on my water bill? I was not in favor of the water line, but I had to pay. So I'm going to call that a hardship. Maybe you should forgive that too. Thank you. I just uh, had a couple of quick questions. One, I, I noticed the issue, and obviously it came up on the uh, fire at Markle Recycling, and I'm not familiar with that fire, but do we know what caused that fire? So we're, we're, we're forgiving a debt for something that may have been caused by something that they did? Somebody ought to be looking into that, I believe, because we should not or, or just forgive it if there was something that was caused that fire that they didn't do properly. Just a reasonable thing to look into. That's common sense. Uh, secondly, you guys broke in the middle of the uh, meeting for uh, a short adjournment, and there was a mention when you left of how are we going to pay for the 49000 or $47,000 for the park, and you broke and adjusted, and then you came back and talked about a $12,500 grant. That's fine. Where's the rest of the $36,000 coming from? I think the board needs to address that. Okay, my name is Susan. I live on Shortcut Road. First of all, I agree with Lori. Sandra, it's nothing personal. You have been out of the township for over two years. Your children go to St. Clair. You are not a resident. You are not a registered voter. You have no interest in the township. You do not belong on this seat. And it's nothing per personal. It's principle. Second of all, you, Kelly, made a comment when you were arrested for drunk driving. How dare you make the comment that you are a widow of a man who got killed by a drunk driver? No, you are not. Anybody can look in the obituaries. A woman named Marnie was. You are not. Sympathy ain't working. Okay. Second thing, it cost us 40 what, $8,000 in a matter of 10 minutes for your incompetence because if you would have followed protocol when he told you, Ahmed, to do the protocol a year ago to have the buildings tested, what would have cost us, Ahmed, 
if she would have done that instead of $48,000. Because guess what? We ain't got it. She's cost us lawsuits, $38,000 in lawsuits. $8,000 went to Michael Zorn. $30,000 went to McNamee. You are an embarrassment. <laughs> you need to step down. I am demanding your resignation. You're an embarrassment to this township, period. Sandra's got to go. You got to go. Thank you. My name is Joe Roshan, 5830 Plank Road, Marine Pay, Patriot Township. You were wondering who talked to who about Sandy. I went through the county clerk, county prosecutor, county sheriff, the state board of elections, secretary of state, and now I'm up to the attorney general. She doesn't belong on the board. I don't see why you guys have her on there. Thank you. This is just copies for you. Some and bypass from Marco Road, Potterville Township. You asked for the job descriptions. I have them. It took me a while to get them. <coughs> Oh, that's I just wanted to put them in with the fire. Thank you. Thank you, bye. They're all there. Everything. And you'll see to supervisor's report. The house on Shea Road, uh, I just talked with uh, Fire Chief Joe from Marine City. We're waiting on the insurance um, company to release the house, so then the demolition process will begin. So he said that should be within a couple of weeks. Um, with regards to the demolition of the cabins. I did not know when they were being torn down. It was talked amongst the board as to the possibility of them being torn down. I went before DEQ and explained to them that I never saw anybody tore them down. All I saw was TK put them in a pile. I was not aware of when they were torn down. And that's why we went to DEQ for that specific <laughs> reason. Um, we had nine months, or I'm sorry, three months to tear them down. We were already behind on that, which didn't matter because what we were looking for was for quotes to get them to tear them down. So when they were tore down, that's how that whole mess started. <coughs> I'm one of five. I'm certainly not able to make a decision for the township. It's a uh, township vote, the board votes on that. Uh, none of us were aware that the cabins were torn down. When we went to DEQ, we had expressed that and we had also spoke to them about the two companies that were involved in the demolition and being that I did not know what, who did what. Um, we explained that the lack of communication from, well, the lack of knowledge from our building inspector because he had told us that we did not need an asbestos survey when it was brought to our attention from Sir Med and Huron Consultants and him being here 30 years and working for the township. We weren't aware. There was nowhere in all of the grant which stipulated the nine bazillion things that you had to do for everything else that you needed a survey and that's part of what we spoke to the DEQ about. Um, so. 
with regards to that and their understanding of how everything took place, that is why they gave us the $500 administrative fee because everybody's intentions were to do the right thing and it just bombarded into, we don't even know what, but they were understanding and John and TK and Bob Armstrong were all there and all in agreement of the actions that had taken place. So that is the waterfront park issue. And that's all in, you can FOIA it or whatever, that's in our, our packets that we all got. Um, with regards to Tony, uh, yes, we were looking at a way to cut costs when we were doing the budget. It wasn't just maintaining the park. I had offered to power wash the uh, garage doors. Uh, Lori offered to paint. We talked about who could do the, the building asked for the board members. I mean, we're all coming up with crazy things. It wasn't anything personal. We were coming up with ways to try to save the township money with regards to that. Um, what else do we got here? With regards to my credit card expenditures, the, neither the state nor our township attorney found any wrongdoing. Uh, that is also in here in John's response. Anybody can FOIA that. I'll keep it short and simple. Um, <clears throat> it's, I mean, it's just in here. There's no one doing I'm not going to waste anybody's time with that. It's late. If you guys want to FOIA, you're welcome to. Um, with regards to Mr. Santos and his money issue, there is... A letter from Connie that she turned into Mr. McNamee that states that she uh, she recalled the check in the envelope because it was just to Cotterville Township. She thought it was a water or tax bill. She opened it, realizing it was a donation from Mr. Santos. There was a note in it. She gave it to me and to forward to the lady, which I did not look in the envelope, so I'm not aware of this. Um, several weeks later, Mr. Santos called and asked her who was in charge of donations. She told him it was her, instructed, that, and she was instructed to give all donations to me. Mr. Santos told her that the lady never received the money. She asked him if it was cash or check. He told her it was a check. She asked Mr. Santos if he checked on the bank to see if the check was cash or not. He told her, no, it had not been cash. She asked if he knew who signed the check. He replied he didn't know. And then she told him to check with the bank to get a copy of the check, and he would look into it further. And that's what she's, that's her statement. You can play that. Um, let's see what else do we got. Uh, with regards to the demolition of the cabins, it was stated that the expenses, the park expenses are not supposed to come out of taxes. The purchase of the park, the waterfront park, is not supposed to come out of taxes. Anything after that comes from wherever we can get it. That's why we're scrambling to do what we can and find grants to make it as minimal cost as possible on the residents. Um, with, re with regards to the, the Open Meetings Act, there, I am one of five. There's five board members. Uh, we were all fined the $8,000. My name was on the, the initial court case because I am the, I'm the one who's running the, the meeting. Uh, I'm sure if I wasn't aware that he was cut 40 seconds short. None of the other board members were aware. Had they been aware, I'm sure they would have said, hey, you're 40 seconds short. For our own trustee, to go and sue us and not say you were 40 seconds short is who would have thought. But so it wasn't just myself that wasn't aware of the 40 seconds, it was also the four other board members. And I think that's all. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries.